Praise the Lord and welcome to Fountain of Life Ministries on our Friday night Bible study. And we have a treat for you on tonight. God is so good. Tonight we're going to ask uh, Minister Juan Hunter Jr. if he would come and bring us our Bible study on tonight. We just want you to tune in. Go grab your Bible if you're at home and you haven't got it. For those that are here with us, get your Bibles and follow along as we go Come through the scriptures to see what the word of the Lord has. I was thinking even on my way here about, Lord, we're going to sit at your table and feast on manna from on high. So I just thank and praise the Lord for all those that are tuning in and all those that are joining us. And at this time, we're going to ask Minister Wagner if he would come. He may want to lead us in prayer before we get started. But we're going to turn it over to him. And ask the Lord to just use him how he will. God bless you. Amen. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord, everyone. Praise the Lord. It's truly an honor to be in front of you all and to be speaking to those who are having their homes or watching inside the car or even at work. Uh, I just want to say thank you to my pastor, my first lady, and also, I want to say thank you to God because it's truly an honor to be used by Him. And I want to say thank you to the saints as well. Uh, before we get into the Word tonight, I just want to go ahead and go for the Lord in prayer. Jesus, we thank you for all that you have done for us. We love you and we praise you for all that you're doing. We thank you, O oh God, for allowing us to make it through another week. Allowing us to make it back to your house, oh God, to your temple, where we can worship, where we can pray, where we can get strength and you know, we can get our joy and our happiness and more energy to keep going forward in your work, oh God. Please, oh God, use me, oh Lord, as a vessel in this moment and this time, oh God, to say what you want to have your people to hear. We thank you and we praise you for all that you're doing right now, oh God. Please just have your way inside of us and everything around us, oh God. For you are truly in control of all things. You are in control of all our situations. You are in control of everything that's going on in our life right now. We thank you right now for not forsaking us, God. We thank you right now for always being there and always doing what it is that you know best for us. Lord, we thank you for all that you've done and all that you're doing. God, please, Lord, right now, this moment, we thank you, those who Lord don't Jesus. know you, God, God for please, what you're doing. Lord, remember, this is the end, Lord. Remember, I know you, somebody who knows who you are. Thank you, God, for allowing us to be with this. Lord, you know that you're God that heals, Lord, Jesus. What you've done and what you're doing. We love you right now. Lord, we praise you, God. Please just have your way and give us a word on tonight that we can take home with us and that we can use it to place it upon our heart in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Tonight we'll be discussing something that's real powerful but simple at the same time. Uh, two things that we'll be discussing will be consistency and responsibility and these two things are really important because consistency certain levels of consistency can determine your identity of who you are and what, what consistency roots from is is uh, the word consistent which the word consistent is a uh, So the word consistent is to remain the same over a period of time. And of course that's Webster's definition of it, but it's a powerful word because we serve a God who has been the same and has been consistent over a period of time. And he'll forever be the same. The same one who was with Daniel in the lions, then the same one who was with Shadrach and Meshach and Abednego inside of the fiery furnace, the same one who was, uh, who was delivering the children of Israel out of Egypt, the same one who was with Abraham, uh, the same one who was 
in the Old Testament and in the New Testament. He is the same God that is with us right now. He's always been the same God. He's uh, never changed. He's always been good. He's always been powerful. He's always been reliable. When we think of the word consistency, we think of other words like faithful, or we think of other words like uh, reliable, or we think of words like we just think of, of different things. But uh, in that, I wanted to also bring out the, the point that your consistency can determine your identity. When I say that, it's when a person is consistent and, the, and you know them to always be a hard worker or you know them to be uh, on time at all times, that's something that is that they have been consistent with through a period of time that they are that has determined their identity. And with that, in the scripture, in, the, in every scripture, in every passage of scripture, God has given us evidence of His consistency. He's also given us evidence in our lives and shown us in our lives that he is consistent. And many times he has healed us and he has healed our bodies. He has healed someone that we know. So we call him a healer. That's We identify him as a healer because he has been consistent with what he was doing. And uh, he's been a miracle worker. He's been, uh, he's opened up doors and opportunities and, and different things for, for many of us. And we call him provider for that. He's put food on the table. He's then uh, made ways to pay a bill. That's when we, we identify him through his consistency of the things that he has done. And it's the same way with us as children of God. We If, if we are to be called children of God, that's our identity. And if we're identified as children of God, then we should be consistent in the things that children of God do. We should be consistently reading. We should be consistently praying because in the word it says pray without ceasing. We should be consistently fasting. We should be consistently loving one another and doing all these different things. There is characteristics of God that should be placed inside of us because of who we are, because we are identified as children of God. So there should be a level of consistency throughout that. What would it be if God wasn't consistent? If God wasn't consistent, I honestly don't think he would be God. Because the simple fact is what makes him so powerful is because of his consistency to always be there. He's reliable. And, and again, as children of God, we should be reliable. These are characteristics of God. And the same characteristics of God should be on the inside of us. But... That, that's when you are, you are identifying that uh, you are identified by consistency. But consistency doesn't just stop right there. It's the same way as, as God is reliable in the things that he says. He makes promises that, that he, uh, he keeps. And also when, when God says something, Best believe that it's going to be done. Best believe you can take it to the bank. In the words of my pastor, you can take it to the bank and the check will be cashed. <laughs> you believe, it, it, trust and believe that whatever he says in his word or whatever he says, period, it will manifest itself because of who he is. And we should be the exact same way as far as being reliable. We should also, uh, another example of, of, his consistency was inside the, the Gospels, the Synoptic Gospels, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. Well, not John, because John talked a little different on, <laughs> on, on Jesus. But in, in Matthew, Mark, Luke, uh, Jesus was very consistent. He used his consistency to fulfill his responsibility. And in that, and in, in, in him, in, in that, just fulfilling his responsibility, he used his consistency. He used his consistency 
to be known, to become famous through healing, through working miracles, through uh, everything that, that, that the, the gospel is talking about. But it was all to uh, fulfill the responsibility of saving mankind. And through his consistency, it was proven. See, when you're when you're consistent with something, it, it only brings proof to your responsibility. And each and every one of us have a responsibility that God has given us. And in that responsibility, we have to be consistent because if we're not consistent, it will affect our responsibility. It, re, it will affect the goal at hand, which the goal is to, to bring people to Christ and, and, and show that we are effective witnesses because that's the responsibility that God has initially given to all of us is to be a witness and to tell of the good things that he has done, what he's doing right now, and what he plans on doing. And because that's our responsibility, we have to uphold some type of consistency through our walk with Christ because it will be effective. What type of effect will we have if we, we're not reading our Bible all the time? What type of effect will we have if we're not praying all the time? What type of effect will we have if we say one thing on, on Sunday, but then turn around and Monday comes, we're right back to the same old thing? What effect would it be if we got people, loved ones that are close to us, that see our lives, that is something for a good uh, child of God. They see our lives and they see how God has changed our lives. They see where we have come from to where now, where, where, where we are at, where God has, has us at. Th that, that is the effect that God has had over our lives and that has over our lives. But He's still working that responsibility out in us. He's still working that consistency out in us, even as we live in. But what effect would it be if, if people seen that we was on both sides of the fence? What if they seen that we was serving two masters? If you turn to, uh, if you turn with me to. Uh, Matthew 6 and 24, it says, No man can serve two masters, for either he will hate the one and love the other, or else he will hold to the one and despise the other. Ye cannot serve God and man. Thing is, when you consist when you when God has changed your life and you and he has saved you, you have to be consistent in that, in his walk, in his purpose. And the, one of the main things that I liked about uh, that I liked about Webster that, that God had brought out and shown me is when when uh, let me go to it real quick. When you when you look up consistency, consistency says conforming, and the definition of consistency is conforming in the application of something. Which I really liked how that, that was, because when you conform, that means you uh you done shaped, you done been molded to. And then application means you're applying or to, you're going to. And then the something that we're talking about is God. When God has changed you, and he, then you're starting to be consistent with, with the walk of God and the walk towards God, you're conformed to God. Not only that you're conformed to, you're conformed. To, to his ways, you conform to, and you do those things, you are consistent. When people look at your life, they know that you don't go out to the club. They know that you don't go to a party. They don't even bother to ask you if you want some to drink or do you smoke. Because the simple fact is, they know for a fact that when God took over, conformed your life, that now the application that you put to it it's, there's a change about yourself that you're no longer the same person. So we have to be, we have to have some type of consistency because the consistency it, it, it allows the effect of the responsibility to be proven proof. That the consistency is the proof that, that that the responsibility is what it is. And and our responsibility 
like was stated before, is to be a witness unto God, to be uh, be the light here on the earth, to be salt on the earth. What would it be if the salt lost its savor? The, we wouldn't be anything. Our, our credibility would be lost. And that's what consistency does in our responsibility is that it gives us credit. And, and one person that I know for a fact whose credit is good, and if nowadays you got uh, 900 a credit score, which I know I don't have 900, <laughs> I'll tell you that right now, full disclosure. But, but I know somebody who, if, if they did have a credit score, it would be 1,000, and that's God, Christ would have a thousand on his credit score because what he said, what he what what he has said in past time is also coming to fruition. But what he says is going to happen. What he said has no choice but to happen. The thing is, just like when he was creating the earth and creating mankind and creating things, he spoke it into existence. He didn't have to do uh, all this. He just spoke it into existence. And that's the thing. His credibility is he's always been there. That's what makes him reliable. He's a, we call him a savior because he's always saved. He's all, that was his main intention was to save mankind. So what does it look like if God was like, you know what, I, I, I'm going to save today, but I'm not going to save tomorrow. He, it, it wouldn't be God because of who he is. He's not a man that shall lie. He is one that will always tell the truth. He's the one that is the truth, the light, and the way. He's the only one who can uh, give you that consistency, which brings me to my next, the next read. If you will go to... Sorry, 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 sorry. Sorry, sorry Mom. They're, they're actually everywhere. <laughs> but if you go to uh, Corinthians 1 and 17, it says, And he is before all things, but, I mean, he is before all things, and by him all things consist. Thing is, he's the one who has created all things. He is the one who, who, who has given us in all things existence. He has given this, this wood here existence. He has given everything that you see with the naked eye existence. If it wasn't for him, then therefore it would not be. But we have to understand that he has always been consistent. He has always been the same from before time even to now. And that, you know, what you have to understand is that because we serve a God who has always been the same, because we serve a God who, whose word is true, who does not lie, we have to understand that even though we, we look at all the good things, and we say, oh, you know, God is loving. He is loving. His love and His mercy and His grace is everlasting. But also, He has a wrath. So we have to make sure that we are always lined up with Christ. We have to make sure that throughout this walk, that throughout this consistent walk, that we 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 always, uh, they say, repent daily. We have to repent not just daily, but every moment of the day. They get that's a consistency. That's something that goes on continuously throughout the day. Not only throughout the day, throughout the rest of the remainder of your life here on earth. It has to be a consistency there. And then not only that, with uh, with, with with everything else that that it comes with, this this walk is hard. This walk's not going to be easy. I know some people might say that, oh, you know, once you get saved, it's a bed of roses, or you're going to smell like roses, but it's not going to be a bed of roses. It's going to be very hard, because once you get saved, now the enemy wants to take you out. Now the enemy has to get you before you start reaching other people that are close to you, which that is really our job as a witness. Sometimes uh, sometimes God gives others the gift to to go out and, and reach those who are strangers and stuff like that. But really, he brings you out to bring that little circle that you was in out with you. Amen. And the thing is, when he brings you out, you're supposed to reach back and grab more to bring to bring over to Christ with you. And, and in that, that only way that they will come is through your consistent walk with Christ. They won't come if they see, ah, well, he's, he's in church one day and he's out the other. Oh, she's... She she's in church one day and out the other. There's no credibility there at all. But we serve a God who is consistent. 
We serve a God who has always been there. We serve a God who has always said that he was there, who's always spoken to us. Now, whether we hear him or not, whether his voice gets, gets softer or whether his voice gets faint in our ear, it, that's all because of us. That's all because of the direction that we're going in. And we, all, we should always be walking towards Christ at all times, especially when you consider yourself a child of God. But so let me get back on track. Uh, I started again, started veering off a little bit, but to get back on track, his responsibility was to save. Jesus' responsibility was to save. His consistency gave him credibility. The consistency gave him the, the, the fame which the, 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 for everybody to know who he was. When he would, when they would say Jesus is coming, they knew that a healer was coming. But when they said Jesus was coming, oh, I can get my miracle today. When, when, and, and in that, he did that so that he could get build that credibility so that he could fulfill the responsibility. Because the important thing is the responsibility. Because the responsibility was that he wanted to save mankind. He wanted to save you in my life. And, and in that, God... Jesus was, was when, when, when he was here on earth, he, he was consistent. He was always, and if you look through the passages of scripture, he was always going from here, there, healing, saving, delivering, opening of eyes, and, and just working miracles, which was uh, building up this credibility, building up to where people wanted to follow him. Now, it's something when a person... When you just look at a person and because of his consistency, well, God's consistency, he, he, you look at him and there's just this glow and there's just this, there's something about this person that, that I have to follow him because I know it to be true. I don't even know him, but I know it to be true. But he, he, he's real consistent. He's real reliable. And he used his consistency to fulfill his responsibility. His responsibility is our responsibility. If we're children of Christ, his responsibility is our responsibility. His wants is our wants. His desires is our desires. So if 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 he's consistent and he wants to wants to uh, save mankind, that should be our main goal. Is is I know you know other things pop up and other things in life happen, but the main goal at hand is once once God saves us. Once God turns us into a witness of who he is, our job now, our main job should be going out and reaching others that we teach, that we go out there, that there's preachers, there's prophets, there's, there's all these different evangelists, and, and, and the list goes on. But then your responsibility might just be standing at the door greeting somebody, but even in that responsibility, there still has to be consistency there because what is it if you're not you're never on time and you're not at that door? What if uh, then who's gonna who's gonna be there to greet that person? It would be nobody there because that was your responsibility. What if what if you was to uh, be the one who, who who hosted prayer on Wednesday night services and you was never there hosting the prayer? Then it it would be your consistency would be off and your credibility would be bad. And then people wouldn't believe what you're saying. And and you don't want to set yourself as, as uh, that bad example because once you do that, it's hard to come back from. It's hard to build that credit back up. It's almost like when uh, when I was a kid and I ended up getting a Camaro. I don't know why I did it. Well, I know why I did it, but I don't know now why I did it. Because now... I have to turn around and pay that debt off, and I don't even have a car anymore. So I got to build my credit back up to a point that it was already in at first, but I ended up losing that, that good credit and trading it for bad credit, and, and now I'm working even harder just to get back to good credit again when I already had it. So if I would have just been consistent with my payments, therefore, <laughs> I would still have a car for one. And for two, it would have been paid off and I would have had good credit. But that's the same way when I walk. We have to be consistent because of, there are people watching us. We have to be consistent. And, and 
in everything that we do. But even as I stated earlier, consistency strengthens the credibility of responsibility. Our responsibility is to be a witness. Our responsibility is to do whatever God wants us to do and, and uh, tell about who he is and what he has done for us and how he has changed our lives, how he has made us transparent, how he has done all these miraculous things and miracles in our life. And then not only that, he's also shown us what he's going to do in our life. For most of us, he's shown us what, what, what he's going to do in our life. I, I, I believe in signs and wonders, and God has shown signs and wonders, and, and he always gives signs and wonders in dreams because he, he, he's not a God who, is, who, who doesn't show you what's going to happen, even throughout all of his, his and that's even consistent with itself, Throughout his whole word, he's always said, if you do this, then this is what's going to happen. And throughout his word, he's always said, if, if you do this bad thing, this is the repercussion for that. This is the punishment for that. But if you do this good thing, especially in Proverbs, and uh, I kind of sound like a pastor right now. I start going off in the Proverbs. But really, it is a good read. You should read it at your own In, in Proverbs, I, I like it so much because it always tells what's the repercussion of something or what is the outcome of something. It'll tell you if you do this, if you're a tither, then your your uh, cover will be overflowed or your uh, your storehouses will be filled. It, it, it says different things that if you do this, then you'll do this. And uh, people should... I, I believe people should actually see that you 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 or accidentally see that you read your word. No, I was gonna say accidentally see that you read your word because of course we're not like the Pharisees and we're out here putting ashes on our face when we're fasting to let the world know that hey I'm fasting. But I think because of your consistency on reading and praying and fasting, you do it so much that somebody is to stumble across you in the process throughout your life and be like, oh, excuse me, my man, I'm sorry, I didn't, I didn't know you was you was praying, or, 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 or different things like that. And that's all due through consistency. But you must know that God is the only one who gives you the consistency. God is the only one who will give you the consistency. When, 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 especially when it comes to uh, praying and fasting, because your flesh doesn't want to pray, your flesh doesn't want to fast, your your flesh doesn't want to do the things of God. So because of that, God has to strengthen you. God has to give you that desire. He has to give you all of that. And and in that, He's the one who actually is doing all of the operating. He. When well, our only job is to submit ourselves over to Him, because if we submit ourselves over to Him, if we submit our lives over to Him, we submit ourselves and become living sacrifices. That means He's going to do it all. He's going to lay a path out for us. He's going to bless, which He already blesses. He blesses the just and the unjust, and also He reigns over the just and the unjust. But He He does everything for us. So. Everything that you would have need of, everything that you would think that you would have need of, it all comes from him anyways. He's the one who gives it in. He's the one who takes it away. But uh, because, like I stated earlier, that life might happen, things happen, he'll bring stuff your way. It's only to strengthen you. It's only to develop you. Or it, it's, it's something that God is either trying to bring out of you. Or it's something that he's trying to, to do in you. Or, or we don't know what God wants or what he's doing. Well, we know what he wants, but we don't know what he's going to do inside your life. No one knows what God is going to do inside your life. But God, to a certain extent, he lets and shares us what he's going to do in the near future. But we don't know exactly all that he's going to do. We don't know how he's going to move He'll bring things our way that might seem detrimental to our life. Then he might bring things our way that that uh, almost be 
the temptation, well, he doesn't tempt us, but he will allow the devil to tempt us. He will, he will allow the devil to do certain things, just like what he did with, with Job. And the main, the reason why I like Job so much is because, for real, throughout the whole entire thing, Job was being consistent. He was saying, uh, God said, this is my faithful servant. I know that, that and see, that was another word that, that comes up when you think about consistency. You think about faithful. You think about faithfulness. And uh, with Job, he was faithful. And, and the devil was like, you know, uh, I, if you just, you know, take your hand off of him, trust me, he, he'll turn his back against you. But it, because of Job's consistency, because of Job wanting to, to serve God and, he, and how much he was going to serve God, he said no. He said no. Even when his friends... Because there'll be people that they'll come up and be like, "Why do you serve? Why do you serve this 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 guy that 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 you know?" And, and when a friends like Job pop up and say, "Why why continue serving this guy? You you know you sh and you should just turn your back on him right now." Thing is, when they say that, that's when you should step up and rise up even more and say, and, and tell about all the good tributes they about God and what he's done for you. You tell them that, oh, he's done, he's done made a way for me. Even when I was out of darkness, he's still covered and protecting me. That's when you start telling the good stuff about who God is and what he is in your life. That's when the when you start identifying what, 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 uh, who God is to those people. You can call him a savior because of some fact he has took you out of darkness. He has delivered you from sin and, and, and all these different things. You call him Lord, you call him Master. These are all identifying who God is. And the thing is, when 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 uh when when they come to you and say, you just tell him, you just tell God's track record. Because his his, his credit is perfect. He's got perfect credit. I mean, God has perfect credit. He's he's everything that he said he's gonna do, he's done it. And then not only that, he's even blessed us in his word to tell us what he's going to do in the latter future. And, and the thing is, that should actually bring about change just or a desire to want to seek him even more if you don't have your life right with him. Because the simple fact, if, if you know this is what the future is to hold, he's been showed you, he's been told you that this is what the future is to hold. And that, that if you're not right with me, then you're going to automatically be condemned to the lake of fire then and, and, and have a second death. Then that, that, for me, I know that's one of my biggest things is I wouldn't, I do not want to go to the lake of fire. I don't want to even go to hell. I want to be where God is. I want to make sure that I'm praising him for eternity. Y'all, Most of y'all know how I praise God and I love praising God. So I want to do that for eternity, especially when he gives us our new body. <laughs> then we won't feel pain or we won't even feel tired or any, any of these things. So, but that's a whole other story within itself. Let me, let me get back to consistency <laughs> and the responsibility and sacrifice. That's when you tell the tributes and the attributes and, and, the, uh, and, and who God is. Why wouldn't you serve a God like this? A God who's always been faithful. God has always been there. A God who's always made you his priority. Why wouldn't you want to serve God? Because he, he, he is, not only that he's all powerful, he's almighty. He's a mighty God that we serve. And which, uh, which God has given each one of us a responsibility. He's given each one of us a work. He's given each one of us something that he wants us to do. And it truly is a privilege just to even be used by God. Because the simple fact is, he really can have the rocks cry out for you. And we don't want the rocks to cry out for us. We want to be in a position of where God is using us. Because when you're in that position of where God is using you, multiple things happen. Your blessings are there. Your healing is there. Your peace, your joy. All, all of that your happiness, all of it is wrapped up in him. All of it is wrapped up in him. And, and if you if you aren't where you need to be at, if you're not where you need to be at, I, I just want to say right now, or be in some type of encouragement, get ready. Get ready. 
Because there's a there's there's a, 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 a rapture that's gonna occur, and you want to make sure that you are are going back up with God. You want to make sure you're going back up with Christ, because if you're not, that which Pastor had talked about it, then you'll be in the tribulation period. If you're not, then you you you'll be condemned to hell. And and you don't you don't want to be in that place because God didn't intend that for no man at all. It wasn't until we've eaten from the fruit that we put we placed ourselves in that. God intend, intended for man to live forever. God intended death wasn't even talked about until uh wasn't even known until we ate from the fruit. We didn't know anything about it. But if, if you're not where you need to be in with Christ, even if, even if you know, right now you're not really consistent, you read here and there, you pray here and there, you, ah, another one, another thing that God just bumps my mind, yet in your conversation, you have to, you have to be consistent in your conversation about what you say to people, about how you talk to people. Because if you saying one thing, but then you go over here, time goes on, time goes on, then things change, your conversation starts to change, especially when certain people are close to you, you lose your credibility. You, you, you lose it all. So you have to be consistent in, in what you're saying to people. You have to make sure that what you're saying to people is, is a true change in your life. And but if you're if you're not consistent, if you uh, want to be more consistent, then I, I advise you to pray, because I believe in a God who can do all things. I believe in a God who, where we ask, especially when we 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 place our treasures up in heaven. There's no reason He won't do it for us. So if you if you want strengthen to to be a better witness or you, you know, to live above reproach or just whatever it is, I, I advise you to pray. I advise you to pray and I advise you to fast because praying and fasting do two things. For one, it always keeps that communication with God open. And then not only that, when you fast, you turn around and you're, you're killing off the flesh because the flesh will, will get in the way of, of anything that God is trying especially in your life. Uh, but I will pray and I will fast. And I will ask God, God, I just want to be all that you want me to be. God, I just, anything that you want me to do, I, I say yes to you. That's when you go into starting submitting yourself all over again. If you were already done, then you go into to submit yourself all over again to Christ. And the thing is, even for the child of God, we're supposed to be submitting ourselves and, and, uh, and, and, repenting and everything else on a day. We have to do that every single day and not only that every moment in the day. There should be a, a chase or a desire every second of the day for what you got. I, I, I've been asking God to, to have me read more of his word and in that he's done placed the desire in me to every once in a while I just be working on it once in a while want to see what the scripture was he going to give me. Today he gave me Hezekiah. And and uh, I don't know what he's going to give me tomorrow, but I'm sure I'm going to ask him. <laughs> and I'm going to find out. But the thing is, if you want to be better for Christ, be a better witness, be a better example, you want more consistency, you want more stability, you want more establishment. If you want all these things, it's all the only person who can give it to you is Christ. The only person who can who can uh, who can do it inside of you is Christ. Because we can't even do it ourselves. We can't sit here and and do half the stuff that we even do. But everything that we do, God has given us the ability to do. So if if you want more consistency, if you're not where you're at and you want more consistency, then pray and fast and read your word. Read the word. Read the word of God. And we should do that daily. Uh, but I just wanted to bring out those two things on tonight is just consistency and responsibility. 
consistency and the effect that consistency has in the responsibility. And, and just like the perfect example, which was Jesus, he was always consistent. So when people knew that, oh, Jesus is coming to town, then they knew that it was going to get a healing. They knew that it was going to get a miracle. Something was going to happen. They didn't know what it was going to, what was going to happen, but they they wanted something from God. And when when that's the way we should actually be. We should always want something from God. As far as we should always be wanting to go deeper in the young. We should always be wanting to know what he wants from us and what, what to do next. What do you want me to do next time? We should always be in a position where we're serving. And and in that, then we'll become like Job, where God then will vouch for us and say, Hey, have you tried my servant? And, and that's where we want to be at. And the consistency will be there. You'll be blessed in consistency. Trust me, you'll be blessed in consistency. I've, uh, I've been blessed in many times from God. Even when I didn't deserve it, he's still blessed me because he's consistent. And, and, and he's always been that. Mm -hmm. Thank you. That's how we should be. We should be consistent. We should always be that. If, if, if we're consistent, even when you're on your job, and you're doing work, you're, you're, you're always, you know, hey, I know Juan will work some overtime. I know he's going to work. The, my, my boss will come to me and they'll be like, Juan, you want to work this overtime? They know I'm going to say yes. <laughs> they just, they know that. And, and, the, and that's because I'm consistent with that. But that's natural. But we should be consistent in the spiritual because the spiritual supersedes the natural. But I just wanted to speak about that on tonight and about consistency and about responsibility and the effect of the consistency and responsibility. We should really be consistent in, in everything we do. And uh, I just wanted to say uh, thank y'all for allowing me to speak. And I'm going to have First Lady Hunter come back up. God bless you and God speak. Praise the Lord. Let's give the Lord a hand. Praise the Lord. Just a word on tonight. We have to be consistent and we have to be responsible. And God is truly, I like the fact that what Mr. Hunter was saying was that God is consistent. Thank you and praise the Lord. If God was like some of us, sometimes we're in one day, on the next. And one day he was letting us breathe, and the next day he was letting us fall. But God, even, and I like what he said, even in our shortcomings, even when we're not what we're supposed to do, God's consistent in doing what he does. And what we say, that saying all the time, God is good all the time, and all the time God is good because he's consistent. That's who he is. That's his characteristics. When you look at God and you start trying to define who he is, and we could call him a way maker, we could call him a healer, we could call him a provider, we could call him a deliverer, but all in all, we can say God is good all the time. All that he does it is good because he's consistent. But the thing that he does in us is he puts his spirit in us that we can be that same way. When people look at us, they should see consistency. And even when we are falling short, and we feel like we're not where we should be, thank God that we can go to him in prayer and in fasting. And when we're seeking, Lord, I want more of you. Because he's consistent, he's going to honor that. He's going to give you more of him. Sometimes we look and we might ask God, I want the car, I want the house, I want this or that, these natural things. And he'll give us those natural things sometimes. But what he desires and what he's longing for, the reason he came and died is that we would have relationship with him. So when we seek after him and say, Lord, I want more of you. Don't think that he's not going to give you more of you. Don't think that you say, Lord, I want to pray more, that he's not going to wake you up at 2 a.m. and 3 a.m. and 4 a.m. and be shaking. You be like, I can't sleep. I got I to sleep, but I can't go to sleep. My mind, that's because God's trying to get your attention. He said, you said you want more of me. You said you wanted to hear from me. You wonder why people leaving you and turning away from you. It's because you said, God, I want to be closer to you. And he said, well, I got to move some.
some people out of the way so that you they, they won't block you because people will block you from getting to God. And you wonder, why did they leave me? I thought they was my ride and die. I thought we were together like this, thicker than thick. And that's because God said, no, you said you wanted more of me. God is consistent in doing what he said he would do. He said, ask, and you shall receive not, and the door shall be open. Seek, and you shall find. He said that's all we have to do is do it. He's going to be consistent in what he does. I thank you, Minister Hunter, for bringing the word on today and just giving us a, a mindset to know that we have to be consistent and responsible. We should be the best workers on the job. Our credit should be, and not our credit as in our debt and monetary, but our credit as in our credibility that our yays are yay and our nays are nay. It should be consistent that we represent God and we live and walk in the responsibility of what he has given us because he said we rise to walk in the newness of life. So we're new creatures. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things become new. He, we, we need to walk in that responsibility that he's given us as Christ. Thank you again. God bless you to all those that are here with us um, um, in the church. And then those that are tuning in on Facebook, we're so glad that you tuned in with us. Join us on Sunday morning. We have Sunday morning worship service that will start at 1130 a.m. We're at 1234 South 4th Street. We hope you come out and join us. Pastor, our pastor is Elder Juan Hunter Senior, and he'll be delivering a word. And you know there's fire in the house of the Lord. And when it says, you know, you, you I remember a, a saying that says the, that when you put two sticks together, it catches, you know, you catch things on fire. Well, we come into the house, and you come on fire, and I come on fire, and we're going to be on fire with the Holy Ghost. Praising and worshiping the God of our salvation. We thank you and we wish you Godspeed. God bless you.